Welcome to Tech Brothers. In this video, we're going to learn how to prepare a node for SQL Server clustering setup. In this demo, we'll be learning, number one, node needs to have static IP address. If you have DHCP setting, that needs to be removed, and we need to have a static IP address configured on that particular node. In my case, it is TBS node one. This is the host name of my node that I'm going to add in my cluster. Number two up here, we're gonna go ahead and add two LANs, local area network. One is external and other is private. Private is also known as heartbeat in clustering world. Uh, number three, configure LANs for external and private communication. I'll be showing you in the demo. Number four, cluster service account setup. Uh, this service account needs to be admin on that on this particular node. Number five, install failover cluster windows feature and distribution transaction service windows feature. And finally, .NET Framework 3.5 windows feature. Once we install, once we go through all these items right here, our node should be 99.9% .9 uh, ready to be added in our cluster. Now before we configure all these points that we discussed against our node to prepare it for uh, our SQL Server clustering setup, I wanted to share with you uh, my little high-level clustering setup right here. As you can see that it's a two-node cluster right here, TBS node 1, TBS node 2, and this is going to be my cluster name and users are going to connect with TBS 2012 cluster and this is the IP address for that and this is the these are the shared drives that uh, node 1 and node 2 are going to share. Main point to show you this picture is right here, network 1 and network private. Network 1 is our external network. It's going to communicate between node and cluster with your organizational network and uh, private network is going to be used for the communication between node 1 and node 2. Um, right here, if you notice, I have subnet mask 1 for my external network, and for my private, I have changed the subnet mask to 2. This is the requirement for configuring heartbeat or private network. So keep in mind that um, you cannot use the same subnet right here um, to configure your private network. Also, when you configure your private or heartbeat in clustering environment, you do not need to provide your default get gateway or your DNS setting. The reason behind that is there is this uh, network is only going to be used between uh, node 1 and node 2. The communication between node 1 and node 2 is going to take place on our private network and we'll be configuring this uh, private network on both nodes. So let's go ahead and take a look on our node one and prepare it for our clustering. Here is my nodes, TBS node one and TBS node two. These are the two uh, node cluster uh, nodes that I'm preparing to have clustering on. So let's go ahead and open node one and let's make sure that uh, the configuration of our uh, network is right. Right click on the network right here, open network and sharing center. Click on change adapter settings. As you notice that I have two uh, NICs right here, network adapters, one is external and other is private. So external up here, we need to make sure that it is not set up for DHCP, it, it, it has the static IP. So let's go ahead, right click on external, go to properties. <clears throat> I'm not using IPv6, so I'm using IPv4. I need to click on that and go to the properties. As you can see that this is configured for external communication. Here is the IP address for node one, uh, my TBS node 1 and subnet mask right here, default gateway and my DNS setting. This setting should tell you that this is configured for my external uh, communication. So let's go ahead and check in your IP, uh, in your um, organization if you have a node that you're preparing and DHCP is enabled on that. If you see obtain IP address automatically, this is checked and obtain DNS server address automatically. If this is these two options are checked, that means the DHCP is enabled on your particular node that you're trying to get into your uh, clustering. So keep in mind that that needs to be removed. You need to click on use following IP address right here and DNS setting. This needs to be set up. This IP needs to be static in order for our node to be ready to be in cluster. So I'm gonna go ahead and cancel this and let's make sure that our private um, network is all set to. Right click and go to properties. Again, go to IPv4 
properties as you notice right here that subnet uh, subnet I'm not using one I'm using two right here all I did was put uh, uh, provide a subnet mass right here and IP address I don't have default gateway I don't have DNS setting so you don't need to provide these um, settings for private communication let's go ahead and cancel our next tar uh, target is to make sure that our cluster service account is admin on this machine so I'm going to go ahead and go to the management computer management Keep in mind that in my case is Tech Brothers backslash cluster admin. That is the account that I'm using as a service account for this clustering setup. So expand local users and go to groups, go to administrators. And as you can see, the Tech Brothers backslash cluster admin is added is as admin on this machine. If you don't have your uh, cluster service account added as an admin, click on add and provide your account name right here check against your right here your uh, domain or active directory right here uh, if I click OK it's gonna give me error that is already uh, in uh, added to the admin group so if you don't have your uh, cluster service account added you can go ahead and click OK and it will be added to the admin so our next target is let's go ahead and make sure all the features that we talked about right here they are installed on this particular node so we're gonna check for failover clustering windows feature we're gonna go ahead and check in application right here distribution transaction service is in uh, installed and we're going to go ahead and install dotnet framework 3.5 windows feature so if you're using windows 2012 you can basically click on uh, server manager and see what has what's already installed on your machine uh, and if you're using Windows 2008 R2 or uh, Windows 7 you can go in programs and programs and features and see that what's installed already in my case I'm gonna go ahead and click on local servers go all the way down And as you can see right here, roles and features, that's installed right here. So we need to find out that, um, that first of all, .NET Framework 3.5 is installed. I wanted to make sure that uh, uh, up here, if you see .NET Framework 4.5, don't let it fool you because this is the higher version and you might think that uh, oh okay I have dotnet framework 4.5 so I am good to go 3.5 might be the part of this it is not the case you do need dotnet framework 3.5 installed separately even if your dotnet framework 4.5 is installed so keep in mind don't forget that otherwise our uh, SQL server installation will fail in the end so other features that we require are not installed so let's go ahead and install other features if you're using Windows 2012 you need to click on um, server manager dashboard and add roles and features and click next roles role based or feature based installation click next and this is our server where we're going to go ahead and install roles and features click next and up here um, the distribution transaction feature is part of application server you need to go ahead and click on application server so this is the only role we require right now click next and right here is our feature dotnet framework 3.5 feature we're going to go ahead and uh, select this right here dotnet framework 3.5 and we're going to go ahead and select our failover feature clustering right here click on add features let's make sure that uh, everything else is there so click next up here you will see that um, it will give us distribution transactions right here we need to select incoming and outgoing click next sometimes what happen is if you install that dotnet framework 3.5 it needs the alternate source path if you click on that it's looking for source sources SXS this is your installation media and if you have installation media please provide the path right here I'm gonna make sure that uh, uh, if I do have installation media here I don't have installation media so I'm going to go ahead and basically 
add that installation media here and provide that path so that my .NET Framework 3.5 installation will not fail. So here's my image, SQL Server Windows 2012. I'm going to go ahead and mount it. I'm going to go ahead and close this and go to computer to make sure that I'm I provide the right path in my case it's going to be e backslash sources if you open this sources it needs this folder right here so I'm going to go ahead and provide e backslash sources backslash sxs so click OK this is just to make sure that uh, our installation will not fail for .NET Framework 3.5. Somehow it fails in Windows 2012 if you don't do that, if you don't provide the alternate source path. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on restart the destination if it requires, just to be on the safe side. Click on install. Now the installation is going to go ahead and uh, take a little bit of time. So I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, pause the video and I'll be back once the installation is completed. All right, as you can see that uh, required features are installed successfully. Let's close this and go back to our local server and go all the way down into roles and features. As you can see that um, application feature, we did um, basically select that for distribution transactions and our uh, .NET Framework feature is installed successfully. Failover clustering is installed successfully. So our required features are installed successfully that means that uh, this particular node is ready to be added in our clustering